Today, I'm going to take a look at the Yunzi AL75. It's an in-stock aluminum keyboard, which has tons of great features, especially when considering the $109 price tag. There's two color options and switch options. And it's nice to see that there's a tactile switch option as well. So let's open the box and see what's inside. In the nice black box, you obviously get the keyboard itself. And as for the accessories, you get some extra switches, keycaps, a switch and keycap puller, a rubber cable, and the user manual. Now let's take a closer look at the design. The AL75 has a non-exploded 75% layout with a tiny little RGB strip to the left of the arrow keys. And to the right is where you find a badge that also works as a cover for the wireless USB dongle. The anodization of the aluminum case feels smooth and I'm pretty happy with the finish. The case structure is pretty standard with the classic box on a wedge style that contributes to a simpler side profile and overall design. The back side has a centered USB-C port along with some toggle switches for the connection mode. And the underside continues the clean and perhaps boring design for some with four white rubber feet and eight hex screws and nothing else. So now on to the switches, keycaps, and stabilizers. So as earlier mentioned, there's two switch options, the blue-gray tactiles and the cocoa cream linears. I was lucky enough to try both of these switches, so let's start with the blue-gray tactiles. It has an operating force of 37 grams, which is pretty light, and has a total travel of 3.6 millimeters. What's nice about the blue grays is that the tactility is super sharp and it also has an LED diffuser for all you RGB lovers out there. So on to the linears. The Coco Cream V2s has a heavier operating force coming in at 50 grams and has a total travel of 3.3 millimeters. I personally prefer the linear switches, but the blue gray tactiles were nice to type on as well. The keycaps matches the silver aluminum case well they are PVT and decently thick, but I do notice that there are inconsistencies in the thickness of the legends, which kind of annoys me. The plate mounted stabilizers in this board are pre-lubed and it's almost done perfectly. All the smaller stabs sound good, but the space bar did have a slight bit of rattle. Now let's take a quick look at the internals. In the bottom case is where you find two 3000 milliamp hour batteries and as for the foams, you get pretty much everything. Case foam, play foam, IXP switch film, and a PET sound pad too. The case foam is however stuck to the backside of the flex cut PCB, which is weird, but it does the job. And both the PCB and the polycarbonate plate has flex cuts. So the internals has what I like to call the current industry standard regarding flex cuts and foams so it has everything you need as a beginner. Now let's hear the sound tests using both the blue-gray tactiles and the cocoa cream linears.
so the typing experience is surprisingly stiff, especially as the plate and PCB has tons of flex cuts. The keyboard sound is extremely loud and has that creamy foamy sound profile, so if you would like a really loud creamy keyboard, then you would definitely like this one. It has a minimalistic design and comes with pretty much everything you need as a beginner. And what I appreciate is that it's in stock, so you won't need to stress about group buys either. The keyboard is, however, not VIA or QMK compatible, but Yunzi does have a software where you can customize the RGB, key mappings, and more. But other than that, I really can't complain, especially considering the price of $109. Now that was it for my review of the AL75 by Yanzi. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like. And if you enjoy my content, please subscribe. And until next time, peace.